Well, hello, gang. I am going to teach you all about Section 2.5, and I'm going to do so without my notes because I printed them off, and they are completely illegible. So this should be very interesting. All right, uh, Section 2.5 is just jam-packed with all kinds of stuff. And so this is going to be broken up into several videos. And the objectives are to apply the fundamental theorem of, theorem of algebra in the linear, oh my word, apply the fundamental theorem of algebra in the linear factorization theorem. Try saying that three times fast. That's what we're going to do in this video. Then I'm going to give another video that has to do with the rational zero test. And then I'm going to give you another one that talks about uh, reducing uh, to the reals and factoring until it's irreducible and, you know, stuff like that. Then I'm going to give you another one that talks about properties of complex zeros. Then I'm going to give you another one about the Cartes rule of signs. And finally, oh boy, there's even more that I didn't even write down. Uh, the upper and lower bound test, which is another trick. And then we're going to use all of that stuff to find all the zeros of a polynomial function. Like I said, there is just so much in this chapter. Uh, it's, it's tough to learn this stuff one at a time. Uh, you got to do some practice with it, but in the end, you're going to bring it all together to solve one problem, and the stuff is a little bit second nature by that point. So it's good stuff. It'll help. So uh, let's try to put this Pat chapter in perspective so that we understand where we are going. We learned how to graph quadratics at the start of this chapter. Now we're going to learn how to graph higher degree polynomials, cubics, uh, fourth degrees, fifth degrees, and so on. All right, and those are complicated graphs. And you already know that um, there's n minus 1 curves in each of them, up to n minus 1 curves. So they are pretty complicated. So if we're going to be able to graph these, we need every little bit of help that we can get. And that's what this chapter is all about. So, uh, it's absolutely loaded techniques. Yep, talked about that. Getting things out of order here. That's terrific. Uh, force seems over. Yeah, yeah, I already want that. Uh, and the end, all too, yep, yep. Uh, you will become a white wizard of finding zeros. Not, not just some mediocre gray wizard. No, you're going to be a white wizard. Like Gandalf ended up. All right, so the fundamental theory of algebra. Uh, is this a polynomial of a degree n has at least one zero in the complex number system. A polynomial of degree n has at least one zero in the complex number system. Okay, bear in mind that the complex number system includes real numbers and imaginary numbers. All right, six is included in the com in complex numbers just as 6 minus 2i is. All right, so this is telling you that there's going to be at least one zero in the complex number, number system if it's a polynomial. All right. So you're thinking to yourself, really, one, and it's a complex one. That's all the more specific we can get, one, Oh, no, we can get more specific than that. In fact, a polynomial of degree n has precisely n linear factors. In other words, n complex zeros. All right, so each linear factor is a zero. So this is telling you that an nth degree polynomial has n zeros. So why do I have quotation marks around the zeros? Okay, because a zero in the real domain is where it crosses the x-axis, but a zero in the imaginary domain has nothing to do with crossing an axis. It's nothing more than a root or a factor. So for that reason, the term zero is not entirely appropriate when dealing with complex numbers. All right, 
How many times am I going to flash that dumb thing up here? All right. So now you know that if you have a, this polynomial, x to the fourth minus x to the third plus x squared minus 3x minus 6, that you have a total of 4, because it's degree 4, linear factors. Isn't that swell? But how do you know where to start? How do you know where to find those zeros? I'm glad you asked. For that, I introduce to you the rational zero test, which I will bring to you in the next video. Adios.